Hi, welcome to Your Great Journey. Each week we offer you brief tips, techniques, and insights to help you move in positive directions and master big change. For more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W E T W A R E M E D I A dot com. No matter who you are, where you come from, what your current path is, whether you want to change your life completely or to make simple adjustments to add richness and depth to your life, you'll appreciate the excerpt we're sharing today from the audiobook Living Deeply The Art and Science of Transformation in Everyday Life. Written by Dr. Marilyn Mandela Schlitz, Dr. Cassandra Veeton, and Dr. Tina Amarek. This audiobook weaves together cutting edge science with wisdom from teachers of the world's spiritual traditions. It explores how people experience deep shifts in consciousness and how those shifts can lead to healing and wholeness. In this excerpt, Dr. Schlitz, Vitan, and Amarok discuss the moments in life that lead to transformation, with a special focus on what they refer to as the portal of pain, or those moments of intense suffering or crisis that lead to personal transformation. This excerpt explores the near-universal transformative power of pain, and will help you realize how your own challenges might influence your life for the best. How do consciousness transformations, the kind that make a long-term difference in your life, begin? You can probably identify, in retrospect, some turning points in your life, times about which you can honestly say, after that I was never the same. For example, you may have experienced a shift in perspective after a serious illness, or the loss of a loved one, or a particularly awe-inspiring moment, like giving birth to a child, or visiting the Great Pyramids. But these moments are unpredictable. They can seem so random and so particular to each unique situation that you may wonder, do I just have to wait until I get blown away by some big moment to make a real change? The Portal of Pain Perhaps the most robust finding of our research is common knowledge. Profound transformations are frequently triggered by intense suffering or crisis. Difficult or painful life events often create new levels of openness or vulnerability, thus setting the stage for a shift in worldview. A brush with death, the loss of a loved one, a mental or emotional breakdown, an injury, loss of a job, such painful challenges can shatter defenses that have taken us a lifetime to build. Whether it's the difficulty of realizing that something isn't working in your life, or the suffering you experience when painful challenges cross your path, our research participants identified pain as far and away the most common catalyst for change. To learn more, we met with Gangaji, also known as Tony Varner. Gangaji teaches in the tradition of her teacher Papaji and his teacher, 19th century saint, Sri Ramana Maharshi. Gaganji told us that her unhappiness is what led her to a spiritual path. My own transformative path was inspired by the unhappiness I felt as a young child. Of course, at that age, I didn't know it was a spiritual search. I only knew that I was unhappy and I wanted to be happy. I spent many years trying to get happy in all the usual ways, searching for the right mate or the right thing that would do it for me. In the 70s, I consciously turned toward spirituality. I began many years of spiritual practices, each of which ultimately led me to the same wall. I assumed that this was once again my fault due to my lack of sufficient practice or because I hadn't found the right teacher. These assumptions were suspiciously similar to previous ones of not finding the right mate or the right thing. When I met my teacher, he said something I had never heard before. He said, Stop. Find out who you are. When I actually did stop the search and began to investigate, I found that who I think I am doesn't exist, that any idea of who I am is just a thought. Who I am, in truth, is consciousness itself. Personal suffering, and the searching it often leads to, can be precious gifts. Naturally, I would not wish suffering on anyone, yet suffering has quite a different quality than pain and hardship, both of which are natural occurrences in a human life. 
Suffering is how one relates psychologically to pain and hardship. Suffering is something that gnaws at you over time, which you assign to the realms of cause and effect. If only this would change or that would change, then I wouldn't be in pain. Many people feel great pain, yet they don't necessarily suffer with it. Others may feel very little pain and suffer enormously. Regarding my own early unhappiness and suffering, I bow down to it. I'm happy that it wouldn't let me go, no matter how much I fed it with what seemed to be the best medicine at the time. Ultimately, my unhappiness brought me to the meeting with my teacher and to the discovery of direct self-inquiry. As the saying goes, change is what happens when the pain of remaining the same becomes greater than the pain of changing. Perhaps you, like many people, only change when you are backed up against a wall, when you are absolutely forced to modify your life. When transformation requires some kind of sacrifice, whether of a cherished belief, a comfortable habit, or something you think you can't survive without, you may avoid it until there is no other option. Noah Levine, Vipassana meditation teacher and author of Dharma Punks and Against the Stream, explained to us how, for him, transformation arose from despair and hopelessness. Mostly I came to my current path and practices, and my interest and willingness to practice meditation and service and prayer, out of my own personal despair, suffering, and confusion. I came to a place of hopelessness, to a place of really feeling like everything that I thought would work in the material world, drugs, violence, pleasure, crime, my own confused attempts to find satisfaction, actually led to a great personal despair and suffering. And from that, there was sort of a realization that what I'd been doing was creating more suffering, not less. Coming around to some place of willingness and saying, okay, that didn't work, maybe this spiritual stuff, which I had great resistance to and had characterized as being for brain-dead followers, as escapism, a cop-out, as an unrealistic peace and love ethic, as hippie shit, maybe these spiritual folks knew something that I don't know. One of the gifts of intense suffering can be a newfound willingness to make significant changes. For Gangaji, unhappiness fueled a fervent search that led her to her teacher. For Levine, the gift of suffering instilled within him the willingness to try meditation. Painful experiences can also uncover a longing that we didn't even know was there, or catalyze a search for something we didn't even know we wanted. As Nancy, a 65-year-old retired widow, reported, I had a near-death experience while giving blood for myself before a hip replacement surgery. I was in a tunnel that was dark, but I could see the details of the tunnel clearly. I could hear folks telling me to stay with them, but I could feel the flow of life going out of my body through the tunnel. I did not reach the end of the tunnel. I experienced many traumas in my life for about two years after that, e.g. death of mother, sudden death of husband, and somehow began a fast-track spiritual path that I was unaware I was interested in. It was as though I were being led in a new direction. External experiences of pain, like illness or injury to yourself or a loved one, can have a great transformative potential. Physician Rachel Naomi Remen described to us a kind of unstructured transformative rite of passage that she has observed over her years of working with people with cancer. Crisis, suffering, loss, the unexpected encounter with the unknown, all of this has the potential to initiate a shift in perspective a way of seeing the familiar with new eyes, a way of seeing the self in a completely new way. The experience that I have in watching people with cancer is that the more overwhelmed someone is at the beginning, the more profound the transformation that they undergo. There's a moment when the individual steps away from the former life and the former identity and is completely out of control and completely surrenders, and then is reborn with a larger, expanded identity. Remen speaks to the capacity of painful and frightening experiences to loosen our control and dissolve our identities. But sometimes these painful experiences aren't external. Sometimes they arise from internal identity conflicts. Yoruba chief and storyteller Louisa Tish draws on her African traditions to describe the kind of transformation that arises when people experience conflict between their choices and their purpose in life. The way we talk about it, we would speak of a person realigning their ori, their earthly head, with Ipuri, their heavenly head. Ipuri is that part of a person that is connected to spirit that always has been and always will be. And Ipuri knows what your contract with creation was when you chose to take a body and come into this world. In the process of being born and being socialized, we do the best that we can to remember what we can of the original contract, 
but can get misdirected or redirected through chance and choice. For us, there's destiny, chance, and choice. And if, by chance, we make choices that go against our contract, then we experience alienation and various forms of suffering. Or we have the sense of being lost because we're piling on these things that are not essential to our nature. Then we are struck by lightning. Who we think we ought to be crumbles. And then we are stripped down so that we can transform or be transformed into a closer relationship with pure spirit. So it's kind of like putting on a bunch of attitudes and thoughts and attributes and experiences that have alienated you from your place in nature. And you can do only so much of that before there is some kind of, in this culture we think of it as a breakdown, but I think of it as a breakthrough, where a person has experiences that cause them to rip off all of this and reconnect to their place in nature. And that is what I call the transformation of consciousness. As Tish explains, Transformation often begins with the deep realization that your life has diverged from your values or purpose. The further you get from your values or purpose, the more painful life tends to become. Psychologists use the term ego dystonia to describe those aspects of our thinking and behavior that are inconsistent with, and even repugnant to, our conception of who we are. In fact, many of the participants in our research talked about transformation as an experience that allowed them to recognize that their beliefs, priorities, and behaviors were inconsistent with who they wanted or believed themselves to be. The pain, and sometimes thrilling relief, of this type of realization can open the door to change. Thanks for listening to this excerpt from the audiobook, Living Deeply, The Art and Science of Transformation in Everyday Life. You can purchase the complete audiobook from any major online audiobook retailer. If you'd like more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Please subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. And if you like the show, please rate it and review it. Thanks for listening. See you next week. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W-E-T-W-A-R-E-M-E-D-I-A dot com.